So how about a physical property of something like an alkane or an alkyne? Well, in this case, we don't see as much floppiness as we do with the alkanes. Now, this instead of a hydrogen, this were a CH3 group. That CH3 group would rotate all at once because it's just a single bond between the carbon and a carbon. But how about the carbon-carbon double bonds? So in this case, I've got C2, C2H4. And I haven't drawn the second bond in here, and that's for a reason. So if we had these carbons sitting in the plane of the board and we look at the shape of the pi orbital that's used to make up that double bond, we have electron density above and below. carbon-carbon single bond. And this density above and below here is to accommodate the electron density that's created by the single bond between the two carbon atoms. Now, these CH2 groups, if you look at them, they look just sort of like a sheet of paper. So the whole molecule looks straight. What's to keep it from rotating? What's to keep, keep these hydrogens from rotating 180 degrees and flipping to the other side? Well, it's actually this double bond. So unlike alkanes where everything's being held together in a single bond and all the bonds are made by just taking orbitals, touching them end to end, and that's all that has to happen. In this case, we have to have this electron density formed by taking the p orbitals in carbon and overlapping them. So we make this double bond by taking the carbon p orbitals and overlapping them. Generate these two groups of electron density. In order to get these CH2 groups to ro rotate, unlike a carbon-carbon single bond, we have to break the bonds between the two. So we have to go back to this picture. And when we go back to this picture where the p orbitals are no longer forming a bond, then we can get this rotation. And the rotation has to go 180 full degrees. Because if it doesn't go 180, these two p orbitals can't overlap. If it only goes 90 degrees, we'll have a situation where this p orbital is up and down. This p orbital is into and out of the board, and in that case, they can't overlap to form a bond. So typically when we look at alkanes, particularly along the double bond, and this is especially true for alkynes where we have the triple bond, we don't get rotation along the carbon-carbon double bond. And it's because in order to do that, we'd have to break the double bond. Now, is this possible? Yes. If we excite with the right energy of light, we can promote electrons into the antibonding orbitals of the p orbital, which will temporarily break them, and then thermal rotation, thermal energy will allow them to rotate. But in terms of just heating, you cannot generally supply enough energy or enough heat to an alkene to make it break the double bonds so it'll rotate. So typically when we see these double bonds, we're fixed in terms of our geometries. And that's the big difference. We see a lot more rigidity along the double bonds than we do along the single bonds.